Let us be called to worship with the words from the psalmist. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Praise the Lord, all you loving servants of God. Keep it up. Praise God some more. For the glorious name of the Lord is blessed forever and ever. From sunrise brilliance to sunset beauty, lift up God's praise from dawn to dusk. For the Lord rules on high over the nations with a glory that outshines even the heavens. So let us praise the Lord today. Come, now is the time to worship. Just want to, again, lift up some announcements. Uh, announcements meaning how we continue to be in fellowship and worship and service together. Um, soup, soup and something. For Lent, Wednesdays at 6.30, um, here, Fridays at 10 at Patapsco. And so I want to encourage you to, to give it a try. I think we've had a good time. I didn't throw snakes at anybody last week, but the week before. Um, and uh, um, But also two ways that we can work to feed those in need through the food pantry um, at Patapsco, but also the food room here and Streets of Hope. Um, April 20th, did I get the right date, Margaret? 21st, I read the wrong date on the calendar. Third Friday in April, whatever day that happens to be. Um, and um, then after Easter, really wanting to start some activities for our youth and our children. So there's some more information there about the times. Um, we'll be meeting at Patapsco, and I say that because we do have um, a youth that, that walks most of the time, and so it, this is a long walk from Dundalk. Um, and, and that would be the reason why um, there. And then, um, the puppets are coming again uh, Sundays. The puppets are coming on a Saturday and we're gonna have Sundays with them. <laughs> and uh, it's seven o'clock on Saturday, April 1st. Uh, all kids are invited, all, all people, it doesn't matter what age you are. It's a good time. And then the information about Easter lilies and, um, and we're, it's not a fundraiser. And we're just going through Patapsco because then it's just a one, just have to deal with Dundalk Florist once, just pay one delivery fee, and we're good. So, um, I'll take Kevin Lowe's over okay. if anybody wants okay, some. Uh, okay. Kevin okay, and that they're in the, they were back there. Yeah, okay. Sure. okay, so, um, and then there's information about the Easter sunrise service still. Um, um, I don't know about the crosswalk yet, but Easter sunrise, six o'clock, Robot Willies, um, and uh, it's just a, a beautiful time to come and to, to, to begin the Easter celebration. So, Oh, okay. United Methodist Women. I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, tomorrow at 7 here. United Methodist Women. All women are invited uh, and encouraged to come. Uh, there's a time of fellowship, which always means food, and, um, and prayer and um, in, in being in mission uh, to the community and to the world. So tomorrow, 7 o'clock. Right. Well, now let us just take a, a moment to, to catch our breath, to breathe, and to be still and to know that God is God and, and we're not. Now let us pray together the prayer that's printed on your bulletin. Almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings ordered by your will may be always righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And now I invite you, as you are able, if you would stand and let us join in singing together hymn number 530, Are Ye Able? And uh, we will be reading responsively Psalm 62 uh, after we finish singing, so you can remain standing um, again as you're able. So let us join together uh, in singing hymn number 530.
I invite you to remain standing as we read responsively. Um, Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. It's um, page 787 in your hymnal. The Psalms were the prayer book of and song book of Jesus, of God's people. Um, and for us and for all people for all time, it's, I think it's pretty cool to think that we are also echoing uh, the words that Christ also would have prayed and sung. What page did I say? Okay, uh, your part is the bold portion. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. For my hope is from God, who alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. The trust in God at all times, O God, pour out your heart before God. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are, t- they are together lighter than a breath. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this. Power belongs to God. Um, you may be seated. Jesus is teaching on prayer. Prayer is a means by which we give an offering, but we also receive offerings out of our abundance. Our lives overflow with the goodness of God, sharing what we have so abundantly received. We bring now our tithes and offerings to God with gladness and gratitude. And as we receive the morning offering, I invite you to to sing Fill My Cup. It's hymn number 641 in the hymnal, and you can remain seated as you sing.
and let's give glory to the Lord for that theology. Help them to know how much you love them. Uh, 
bless them and protect them, head, heart, mind, body, soul, from any who would do them harm. And may they grow to, to know your love and to love you and to love others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, feet. Well, thank you. I think there's a plan. I think there's a plan in the back. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. You Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let us uh, let us be in prayer. Let's pray. Oh God, you are good, and your steadfast love endures forever. You are the creator of the cosmos, the giver of every good and perfect gift, our wonderful counselor and prince of peace. And we come to you this day with hearts filled with praise. Um, Lord, help us to to indeed see the good. Uh, the flowers that bloom and, and the blossoms, uh, the, the leaves that are coming forth on the trees and the sun that is shining bright. Uh, Lord, help us to see you in the midst of, of sickness and disease and dread and hopelessness. Uh, God, may we be um, your lights in this world uh, that others might come to know you and to know your truth. Lord, we come and we, we lift up uh, those in conflict, whether it be a personal conflict with, an, with another or whether it be um, nations and people groups warring against one another. We pray that your peace would come. And Lord, may peace also reign in us. Uh, Lord, we lift up those around the world that find themselves hungry um, or, or unable to eat a, a diet which, um, which sustains good health. We pray, Heavenly Father, knowing that there is enough to provide, that you would open our hearts and, and lives to, to be agents of provision where you've called us to. For those that don't have clean water to drink, for those that don't have access to medical care or education or a roof over their heads or, or a place to lay, um, a, a, play, a place to raise their children. Lord, we know that you, as wonderful counselor, are there present to be our comforter. We pray for those that grieve, for those that are sick, for those that are anxious and lonely and hopeless, for those, Lord God, who are um, expectant and, and waiting, for those who have received news that is difficult and hard, for those that are in transition. Lord, we lift up your church, this church, our sister church, and the church universal. I pray, Lord God, that you would wake us up to your love and to, and to your calling in our lives, to worship with all that we are and all that we have. Lord, we pray for revival to begin. We pray, Lord God, that you would call us um, close, as you called us, closer to you. May we take those steps. May we listen to your voice. May we read your word. May we submit to your love and to your law. This day, as we come to you, may we, um, may we find ourselves refreshed anew. Uh, may, we, may we experience your Holy Spirit as we haven't before. Uh, and may we just, may we choose to sit at your feet. And may we choose to offer our lives uh, to your service, however it may be. We lift up those that are on our prayer list. We are thankful for surgeries that have gone well. We are thankful, Lord God, for recovery groups that, that strengthen um, one another. We are thankful, Lord God, for a child care center in, in this church where kids can know that Jesus loves them. We are thankful, Lord God, for a playground that the community um, plays on, a parking lot where basketball is, is played and footballs are thrown. And, and to God, we are thankful we are thankful for a, a, a bar in a marina where we can celebrate the resurrection. We are thankful, Lord God, for all of the gifts that you have given us as, as a church and as a people. 
May we use them for your glory. Come, Lord Jesus. We bring these things and we pray, Holy Spirit, intercede on our behalf. Pray the prayers that, that we haven't prayed. Edit the ones that, that have been prayed. Lord, hear the, the concerns on our hearts. We bring them all to you. We bring them humbly. We bring them boldly. We bring them to your throne of grace with confidence, praying the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The second reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 32 through 42. They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that, if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, Everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray, so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed the same prayer as before. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know what to say. When he returned to them the third time, he said, Go ahead and sleep, have your rest. But no, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. This is, okay, so apparently... This one doesn't like whatever interconnection, internet connection, and if I sit there and stare at that the whole time, we're gonna be done. Okay. All right, so normally I don't begin sermons with a joke. There are some pastors where that is like their MO, like every sermon before they start is a joke. But I might tell you one today. I can't help myself. Don't worry, it's not that good. <laughs> so. Now, Okay, there's a, okay uh, this is the disclaimer also. It's not theologically uh, cor correct either. Like, it's got bad theology. So let's just, let's just get that out of the way. All right. Now, there's a guy. The guy goes to heaven, and when he gets there, St. Peter says, look, um, if you can answer these three questions, I'll let you into heaven. First question, how many seconds are there in a year? Second question, how many days of the week have a T in them? Third question, what is God's name? You have until tomorrow to answer these questions. So the guy comes back the next day and, and Peter asks him, okay, so how many seconds are there in a year? I did a math counts thing yesterday. Those kids would have had that answer before I said second, but nonetheless, the guy says 12. Peter goes, huh, how'd you get that? Well, January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd, April 2nd, Peter goes, not exactly what I meant, but technically you're correct, so I'll give you credit. So then Peter looks at him and says, all right, so what is it? How many days of the week have a T in it? And the guy says, two. Peter just looks at him and says, what? He says, today and tomorrow. She's, okay. So, all right, so now what is God's name? The guy says, Howard. Peter, perplexed, says, how in the world did you come up with that? Well, you know it's in the prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Howard be thy name. <laughs> it's not good. I don't, you know. 
Now pray the Lord's Prayer again and not ever. <laughs> the, the, the close rival must be God's middle name, Andy. Because Andy walks with me, Andy talks with me. <laughs> now I've ruined the Lord's Prayer and in the garden for you. How about that in one day? So, nonetheless, though, there's a lot to be said about the Lord's Prayer. That, that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, uh, it's, it's one that we can all pray in agreement. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a place and somebody's been praying and you're like, I can't say amen to that. But we can all say amen to the Lord's Prayer. Every language, every place, all time, in the Catholic Church, and the Protestant Church, Protestant meaning Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Church of God, non-denominational, Christian, right? We can all say amen to that. And it is, it is part of our heritage. It's, it's a pillar of our faith. And um, we still, though, it's interesting that we still pray it with the these and thys and thine. And we teach it with the these and thys and thine. And, and you know, it's also a person sometimes that, that we can pray it and we don't really give much thought to it. <laughs> but that's why people walk away thinking that God's name is Howard. Right. Now, I spend time with the kids here at the Child Care Center, and, and I found it, I wanted to teach them the Lord's Prayer, and we've used a book, and, and, but it's like, well, I want to, the only way you learn it is to continue to pray it week after week after week after week, and so um, I, I thought, well, let's do that. Now, and I remember as a kid, I remember when I first prayed the Lord's Prayer on my own, and I was sitting on that side of the church, and at Midland Park United Methodist Church, Charleston, South Carolina, next to Terry Marlowe, who is my babysitter, and, uh, and I remember praying. I mean, like, it, it, is, it is a piece of, 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 you know, prayer is that language that we have with God. And so, in that, teaching it to these kids, well, I would pray one line and they pray one line. It's really hard to remember the Lord's Prayer, praying it one line at a time. But I recognized, I was like, what are they saying? Well, they're not praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Guess what they're praying? My kingdom come, my, but they've never heard anything such as thy or thine. That generation, that generation's gone. And so I'm like, oh, we can't do that anymore. So I pray you and, and your, my kingdom come, my will be, my will be, oops, right? <laughs> Though I think that that's a prayer that we pray probably more often than we would like to admit. We are halfway through Lent, a little over halfway through those 40 days. Um, those 40 days set aside for penitence and sacrifice, preparing ourselves to understand the resurrection and the love of God demonstrated through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. You know, and as we have traveled, we've been also looking back through my travels in Israel. It's been nice for me to like begin to try to interpret them more than just a place where I took pictures. Um, those places and spaces, though, where Jesus once walked, where he taught, where he healed, where he prayed, where he cast out demons, where he ate, where he slept. And today we find ourselves in an olive grove called Gethsemane. Um, and Jesus at this place, though, isn't just teaching his disciples how to pray. He said he is praying. And he is, in, in all reality, praying the very prayer that he taught them to pray. Your will, God, be done, not mine. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Um, Christ's sacrifice it was indeed bringing those two in alignment, that we might be made one with God through righteous through Christ's sacrifice, but more on that. Now, we, it, while we were in Israel, we did indeed go straight from the Palm Sunday Chapel, the teardrop tap, chapel, the, the, the weeping over Jerusalem. Oh my goodness. Here, here's my post-it note from last week. I'll say, slow down. Huh. Where, where Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. We went straight from there down past the Garden of Gethsemane, which was really of no account. Or, or they didn't really even let us pause there. So it's just a bunch of trees with a fence. Or, I mean, I thought there'd be a bench under one of those trees I could go sit at. But it was kind of like we were herded around the, the olive trees. And, and then as if we were waiting in line, the Church of All Nations, which is a beautiful, beautiful building, mind you. And, you know, we didn't do these things chronologically. We just tried to get as much in as we could. And, and so, you know, there was a lot of, of, of just seemingly chaos. And there's a lot of tour groups. And, you know... There was a lot going on behind the scenes of our group as we were going from the, the chapel, um, the teardrop chapel to the Garden of Gethsemane. And I got to thinking there's probably a lot going on from the upper room to the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus and his disciples. After all, Judas had already left the room going to get the, the band of, um, 
um, those that were coming to arrest Jesus. Imagine there were some murmurings about, well, what did Jesus mean about the one who dips from the cup? Well, and then Peter, you know, had gotten that news that he was going to be denying Jesus three times. And so I wonder if there was some like elbowing, like, oh, Peter, like you think you, nope. And, uh, and then Jesus had just taken this Passover meal, which was supposed to be this big celeb celebratory meal, and, and began to say that he was going to die. I'm sure there was a lot going on behind the scenes as they traveled from the upper room to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, as we were traveling, I was somewhat distracted. I know that that comes as a huge surprise to you all, that I might have been somewhat distracted. But, um, but truth be told, I was also a little bit miffed. Uh, there's a longer story behind that, and I'm trying to let it go. But alas, there was no singing hymns as we walked. Uh, in fact, um, you know, like I said, it was very, there was very non-consequential. There's a bunch of trees, and then like, we go up, and we're standing outside of this uh, church of all nations. Lots of groups, almost as if there was a line getting in, and, and we stood outside, and Claire, who's our tour guide, was giving us all sorts of details. But then a street sweeper came up behind us. Those things are loud. You guys know they are loud. You can't pay attention. And she's still talking. She's still talking, and she's still talking, and that's really loud, and I'm getting annoyed because I know the longer that we stay outside and she talks, the less time I'm going to have inside where it's a church, and I can sit down, and I can pray, and she's still talking, and I don't care who built this thing. I don't care if it was the Byzantines, and you all might, and yay, I'm sure that that's some things that people like, but my will be done, right? No. <laughs> anyway. So, not only distracted and miffed, I was frustrated and I was angry and I was grumpy and there was just this heaviness. But when I look back, well, yeah, there is a heaviness in that, in that place where, where indeed Jesus is saying, man, fully human, I don't want to do this. Fully human, hey God, but not what I want, what you want. Teach me how to pray. Yeah, the disciples, they thought when, you know, Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount says, here it is. Okay, that one's good, but put it into practice. Be in the garden facing suffering and death and pray, thy will be done, not mine. Now, I go, I think back um, to Jesus teaching, you know, you know, the disciples, well, Jesus saying, don't just stand on the corner and ramble on and on and on. no. Pull yourself aside, and, and all you need to do is tell God what you need, what you want. Praise God. These simple, short petitions, that's the Lord's Prayer. Do you know what? The Lord's Prayer can be prayed in 20 seconds. You know how I know? How long are you supposed to wash your hands? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Um, it's a good practice to be in, is to, to not sing Happy Birthday and pray the Lord's Prayer. You sing Amazing Grace while you wash your hands. Short and simple, not babbling on, and simple petitions, food to eat, forgiveness, safety, but also thy will be done. A simple petition, but a powerful one and a dangerous one. Not my will, but your will be done. Now I grew up in the 80s and was at the, the me decade, right? Me, 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 mine, mine, mine. I think it's only gotten worse. Well, I, think it's, I don't want to say it's only gotten worse because I don't even think the 80s was when the me, 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 my, my, my started. Mine, mine, mine. Um, that, that we find ourselves truly running through the words of the Lord's Prayer, not thinking about what we're praying. And realistically, I think more often than not, we might pray, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. But do we pray, thy will be done in me as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in Katie as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in Lodge, at Lodge Forest as it is in heaven. Or insert your name. I didn't come up with that thought on my own. Uh, my good friend, um, whom uh, Artie, uh, pastor's wife in Mountain View, she said, man, I was caught. I was praying that Lord's Prayer one time and God says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, slow down. How about you pray it? Thy will be done in Artie as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. You know, not what I want, God, but what you want. Jesus fully human. He didn't pull out his divinity card and say, okay, God, I can do what you want because I'm fully divine. Fully human. It's not easy. Uh, it's, not, it, it's, not, it's not easy to, to submit ourselves to the will of God. It's not easy, especially when people are pushing in from all sorts of directions, and encouraging you to take care of yourself first, encouraging you that, that you are number one. 
in, in, and, and, and that, that you are the only one that matters. Not my will be done, but your will, God. You know, you have to think, Jesus, fully human, I don't know that he was looking forward to being mocked, to being spit on, to being beaten with rods, to have people laughing at him. I, I, I doubt he was looking forward to having thorns shoved into his head, or, or, and I'm, I'm sure it wasn't on his bucket list to be stripped down naked and have nails drive through his flesh, or, and it probably didn't top his list to suffocate slowly while in excruciating pain, people still throwing shade his way. But yet, not my will, God, yours. You can do this, God, but not what I want, what you want. We do serve a God who can do anything, can do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. As I was reading this passage, I thought back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when, when King Nebuchadnezzar was calling them to kneel down to this golden statue of, of him. And if they didn't, they were gonna be thrown into the fire. And, and they stood up to them and said, look, the God we serve, can save us and rescue us from, from you and, and this. But even if he doesn't, we're not bowing down. Because guess what, it's not about me. They're like, it's not about us, it's about God who calls us um, to worship him and him alone. Not my will be done, but yours, God. Because we do live in a world that is full of hallowed be my name, my kingdom, my will. Mine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. We are asleep, just like the disciples were asleep. Jesus gave them several opportunities to wake up. In fact, scripture calls us, awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. It's not about this world. We are foreigners in this place. But it is about God's kingdom, and until we can submit ourselves to what God wants for us, um, we will be trapped in slavery to sin and death. We, we think that God is this cosmic killjoy, and, and the only thing that God would want you to do would be something that you would absolutely hate to do. Well, that's a lie, <laughs> like, you know? Because we find, when we find ourselves smack dab in the middle of what God wants us to do, there's nothing more full of joy and freedom in that. I would say more, but we're here, so I'm not saying more. But um, with that, though, you know, we are told in Romans chapter 12, Well, what is God's will? Here we go. Uh, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Man. Think of it, God's will for you is good and pleasing and perfect. Your will for yourself is nowhere close to that. A living sacrifice. Now, there have been times I've thought, this is one of my favorite scripture passages and the way I was gonna preach it is, you know the problem with a living sacrifice? It can get off the altar, you know? And, and I think that, that you know, just as Christ laid down his life on the cross, he lost his life and he rose again that we might have new life, that we might be able to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. But the truth is we have to then I say, stay on the altar, not in a physical place, but stay in connection and in worshiping um, because that is the good and perfect and pleasing will, good, perfect and right and good. Um, I say good a lot of times, sorry. Um, John Wesley and we've, um, I spoke about him before, and he's one of the founders of the Methodist movement. Um, he has, I put it, I'll just get that one. Um, he's written what is called the Covenant Prayer, and I think it's actually in your hymnal. This is a uh, version that has, it's, um, it's, it's cleaned up a little bit from the these and thys and thous, right? But, but with it, it is something that they often talk about just praying at the beginning of the year uh, to, 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 um, to just reaffirm your commitment to Christ. And I have them printed on cards for you to grab uh, with communion. But it's a prayer I thought that might be very good for us to, to offer, um, to pray for the rest of Lent. And um, 
The prayer is, I'm no longer my own but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me, to who, place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you. Praise for you or criticize for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. I'm no longer my own, but I'm God's. You know, it says, put me to doing or put me to suffering, your will be done. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you, unemployed for you, praised or criticized, full or empty. Um, and, and in that, as we fully surrender, as we too, like Christ, say, God, it's going to be tough, but not what I want, what you want. Uh, we will find that new life and that life abundant and that life eternal as a living sacrifice. He took the nails. We don't have to get on the cross, but we, but we are offered that new life as a new creation transformed. I, between places as I drove, you know, last week we ended up at, you know, the, the, the chapel where Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Today it was the rock on, on which, in the garden on which he swept blood for the people. Um, we as a church, as believers, need to be weeping over uh, the, the, the state of this world and, and sweating blood in terms of our prayer. Um, you know, true confessions, I don't pray as I ought. I'm not on my knees in here. Uh, an hour a week or a minute a week, um, consistently praying for y'all, praying for the church. I'm not saying I don't pray. I wonder if we were all to pause and be honest about the time that we actually do spend in serious prayer, um, if we might all be a little lax and we wonder. If we all might be like the disciples, just taking a nap. You know, yes, the last time Jesus says, just keep on sleeping. My betrayer is here. But we've been called to wake up, um, and we have a job to do, and a great awakening. Revival only begins through the work of prayer. Um, many of you may have heard about the revival that took place, um, or, or an outpouring that was occurring at Asbury University in Wilmore last it. Um, it was 30 some. I mean, it, it was around the clock, started February 8th, and was moved on into uh, March, I believe, and it has spread out. But that, that had been being prayed for for years, for years. Prayer is what will spark a revival, not only in your own life, but in the church. And everybody bemoans the state of the church and the pews are empty and the this and the that and the other, but are you putting the work in for them not to be? Are you, are you weeping and are you sweating blood in, in I, I use that. Jesus really did sweat blood. I'm just using that in terms of, of, relate, of a relationship, in terms of are, are we really that invested, um, invested in our relationship with Christ and invested in, in the need for the world for salvation. We do come to the table today, and, and one of the reasons I didn't crop the picture in the bulletin more, um, you would have been able to see the picture in the background better of Jesus praying, but when we walked in, they were celebrating Mass. Um, and, you know, and I thought, as I was putting those pieces together in my head, first of all, you want to talk about being miffed and angry and frustrated. They're celebrating Mass, and people are just coming in and talking and taking pictures, and and my friend Krista, she had to bring me down, and she says, they know that this happens, Katie. You know, this is not unusual, Katie. True. But I think it pretty much represents, though, much of what happens in the ways that, in the ways that we often live out our, our faith, right? That here, here is the, the offering of the broken body and the shed blood of Christ for our daily living we're just kind of wandering around, talking with one another, taking some pictures, as if it were no big deal. It's a huge deal what God did for you and for me. This is where I feel like I keep ending up, because I keep ending up looking in the mirror like this at myself as well. It's a huge deal. 
And if we would just, just, just for a moment, pause to stop being a tourist, to stop taking pictures, but to experience that love, that love which brought God out of heaven to earth, that took him to the cross, and that love which has brought Christ back, risen from the grave, ascended, and coming back. God could have left us in our mess, but chose not to. Fully human, Jesus, your will, God, not mine, and sacrificed his life for us. What a backdrop that prayer is for the table. Um, a recognition of, of submission to God's will. So when we come to the table, we too, as we receive the bread and the cup, we, we, rem we remember and we experience God's sacrifice, um, but let it also be that grace by which you too offer yourselves as a living sacrifice that this world might come to know. Um, the, the love and the salvation and the freedom that comes in Jesus Christ. We're going to prepare um, to go to the table, and we're going to, to pray together a prayer of confession, but I also want to invite any who might be watching, doesn't look like anybody is, that's okay, that you could have communion with us as well. Um, bread, cracker, juice, water would be good. So, all right. Well, let us um, turn our hearts to God. The prayer is on the back of the bulletin, and I, I do have information about what all of those pictures are um, in terms of uh, being at that place. So, as children, as children, as children of God's light, we are called to do what is pleasing to the Lord, to participate in to participate in what is good and right and true, and expose what is unfruitful and evil. Knowing we turn from the light, we bring our confession to God, so what is hidden in us becomes visible, and the shadows of our hearts may be illumined by grace. And let us pray together. Gracious God, we are people who still love darkness instead of light. We keep shameful deeds secret, but flaunt our occasional acts of virtue. We see ourselves blameless, but pass judgment on others. We do not stand firmly enough with those who are vulnerable, but step back, protecting ourselves. Now offer your own personal confessions. We continue in prayer. Forgive us, we pray. Bring us into your light that we may see ourselves rightly. Bring us into your light that we may know ourselves loved. Bring us into your light that we may live more fruitful lives. Keep raising us, we pray, from the deadness of sin and shine upon us with your grace. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. The psalmist assures us God's goodness and mercy will follow us, even pursue us all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, we are forgiven, so receive the goodness and mercy and live a new life in the grace of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord God Almighty, we come to you this day. We come bringing our thanks and praise because it is good and right and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. We come thanking you that, that you indeed have sought after us and pursued us with your goodness and mercy and you will never stop. We are thankful, Lord, for your love that you have shown to us from the outset to now and forever. Where we come and we remember, we remember that, that your son Jesus taught us how to pray. And that your son Jesus lived those prayers that we prayed. We remember that on the night in which he gave himself up for us. First he donned a towel and he washed the feet of his disciples. They abandoned, betrayed, denied, and doubted. 
And yet, he washed their feet, preparing them to enter into his mysterious presence and teaching us what love is and means. And then, Jesus took bread and gave thanks, and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, drink. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. We proclaim that mystery of faith, that Christ became obedient even unto death stepping out of heaven, dying on the cross, rising from the grave, ascending into heaven, and is coming back to judge and, and to bring in that new creation. We pray, Holy Spirit, come upon us and come upon these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. May it be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Jesus comes in final victory. And we feast at that heavenly banquet table, for all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Though we are many, we are one in Christ Jesus, and we partake of the one loaf. This is the cup of suffering over which we give thanks. These are the the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ poured out for you uh, may you indeed um, know the incalculable love of God uh, may you surrender your will to God's will which is to be loved and to love God and to share God's love everywhere to everyone that by the power of the Holy Spirit disciples of Jesus Christ will be made in this world will be transformed